best to walk right, talk right, and sing right, and pray right I'm on the battlefield. I've got to walk right, talk right, and sing right, and pray right I'm on the battlefield. I've got to walk right, and talk right, and sing right, pray right I'm on the battlefield. I'll keep on bringing it so to Jesus. By the service that I give, I've got a helmet on my head, in my hand, my sword and shield. I've got a helmet on my head, in my hand, my sword and shield. I've got a helmet on my head, in my hand, my sword and shield. I'll keep on bringing souls to Jesus. By the service that I give, I am a hard-fighting soldier, and I'm on the battlefield. I am a hard-fighting soldier, and I'm on the battlefield. I am a hard-fighting soldier, and I'm on the battlefield. I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Once again, we've been blessed by the God of heaven who doeth all things well. We saw fit one more time that we we're able to come together on this day in this place with the express purpose of worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And for that, brothers and sisters, you and I ought to be eternally grateful. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. He woke you up this morning started you on your way. He's given you the activity of your limbs, the ability to be able to put one foot in front of another. While you slumbered, slumbered, and slept, he looked at you and he said, one more day. And I'm here to remind somebody and encourage somebody on this day to let you know if you've got a pulse, that means God still has a purpose for your life. We're grateful for uh, you joining us on today. Those who are visitors, our virtual door swing open on welcome hinges, and we invite you back week in and week out uh, for all of our services and members of the body of Christ. We just expect to see you. We're grateful for our brothers leading us up until this point in our worship with songs of praise, the reading of the scriptures, the call to worship, uh, the prayers, and those who uh, have a portion after my portion. Uh, we're just uh, elated again for uh, the things that are going on, even in a virtual format. Uh, Brother Austin mentioned up in the prayers. Uh, Minister Chris Bradley did an awesome job on yesterday, the men's event, when they were all encouraged and inspired, we had men across the brotherhood uh, tuning into that event. We're grateful for all of those who have participated. Uh, we, we just believe that our men were inspired, inspired as a result. We will be publishing that information on uh, YouTube, so the brothers who missed it or others who want to uh, take part in that can listen to that. Uh, marriage Fellowship was great on last night. We got a guest speaker on next month. So we got different things going on in that ministry uh, every single month, stuff to look forward to. Uh, even if things are going great, you know, they still find ways to be able to enhance it. And our sisters had a, a grand time on yesterday uh, with their ladies fellowship. And I know they're gearing up for their collective collaborative uh, Bible study uh, with the CT area churches. So great things to look forward to uh, with them as well. There was a word from the Lord this morning, and I want you to direct your attention uh, to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, we're going to begin at verse number 31. We'll reread with emphasis, and uh, we'll go down to, uh, after 31 to 34, we'll drop down to about verse number 54 and read to 62. Um, we're just so grateful for God and his goodness. He mentioned uh, Sister Anderson at home. So all of the saints who were in the hospital are now home and uh, on the mend and doing better. We're grateful for uh, all of your prayers. Let's continue to be prayed for with, for, and by one another. I reached out several saints this week. Everybody is doing a lot better in that regard. Uh, and we just want to continue to keep uh, one another in prayer. When we when, we, when one is hurt, we all are hurt. When one is on the men, we all uh, are better as well. Luke chapter 22, and we're going to begin at verse number uh, 31. I am uh, preaching to an empty church building today, uh, but I can just visualize your expressions and your amens uh, as well. But despite it all, I just want to let you know I woke up this morning with my mind. Uh, on Jesus. I, I, I don't know about you. God's good all the time. 
And, and even in times of pandemic, we ought to give them the praise. I woke up this morning with my mind, you know it was day. Oh, Jesus, you know I woke up this morning with my mind, you know it was day. Of the Lord, you know I woke up this morning with my mind, you know it was saying, oh, Jesus, we sing hallelujah, 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 amen. Luke chapter 22, beginning at verse number one in the Bible reads, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as we. But I pray for you that your faith fail not or should not fail. And when you have returned, or in some translations, or when you have converted or repented to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you and uh, to prison and even death. I'm sold out, Lord. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you were denied three times that you even know me. We drop down to verse number 54. The text the Bible says, having arrested uh, him, talking about Jesus, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter followed at a distance. Now, uh, when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. And a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, this man was also with him. But he denied him and saying, woman, I do not know him. And that's the first denial. And after a little while, another saw him and said, uh, you are also of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. That's the second denial. And then Peter, after about an hour had passed, another confidently affirmed, saying, surely this fellow was also with him, for he is a Galilean. In some translations, you find his speech uh, betrays him. And verse number 60, the Bible says, but Peter said, man, I do not know what you're saying. Immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, and how he had said, before the rooster crows, you would deny me three times. And the Bible says, so Peter went out and wept bitterly. This morning, I want to speak to you from the subject, as your faith grows, help strengthen others. As your faith grows, help strengthen others. Others. Three points for you this morning. Number one, our faith must be tested in order to grow. Your faith and my faith must be tested in order to grow. Number two, don't fret over your failures because Jesus is on your side. Don't fret over your failures because Jesus is on your side. Verses uh, 32, uh, the A portion of verse 32. And number three, Rededicate your life to Christ and strengthen and encourage others. Verses, uh, verse number 32 to be portion. One through three, one more time. Our faith must be tested in order to grow. That's verse number 31. Number two, don't fret over your failures because Jesus is on your side. Verse 32, and rededicate your life to Christ and strengthen and encourage others. Uh, as we begin to peruse this text, uh, living the Christian life uh, is not an easy task. It is meant, it is fraught uh, with many challenges. Uh, if all we had to do was just observe the word of God without temptation, without snares, without an enemy coming against us, life would be a whole lot easier. But the scripture declares that as well, as long as we're in this flesh and as long as we're here on earth, there is a, a Satan, there is an enemy, there is uh, the devil. And the Bible uh, declares in 1 Peter 5 and verse number 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the, the one who 
always against you, the devil, he goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He is looking to devour, to disrupt, to dismantle, and ultimately undermine your faith as well as ours. And John uh, indicates in John chapter 10 and verse number 10, he said, for the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, but I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. We, we're going to go up against some opposition. There will be some pushback that you'll have in your life. There will be some temptations that came out of nowhere. You will focus on one direction, but somebody is trying to take your attention off of your purpose mission. And brothers and sisters, I'm here to remind you and let you know you can be in the will of God if trouble will still come your way. You can be in the will of God, temptation will still come your way. You can be in the will of God and Satan will still work on your last nerve. All you're trying to do, you have an intent they said to focus your mind on doing the will of God. You've got to know there's going to be a whole lot of intensity or Satan will try to undermine the good that you do. He will distort the relationships that you have that wants to carry you, they can turn into discouraging relationships. I'm here to let you know in order to be able to survive these times, you need a strong, a short enough, strong relationship with God Almighty. The person under consideration for uh, this morning, we're talking about the life of Peter, who uh, was originally surnamed Simon, but Jesus renamed him Peter, which means stone or rock. That signifies Peter's uh, leadership. He was strong. He was a leader of the pack, if you will. But uh, Jesus lets Peter know that he calls him out in his original name. Simon was his name prior to meeting Jesus, but after Jesus met him, he renamed him. And he said, listen, I know you were known as this, but later you're going to be known as that. And he, he goes back in, in the treatment of the text. When we begin reading, Jesus is now telling the disciples, he said, listen, I told you several different times that I'm not going to be here forever. I'm going away. But several times Jesus said, my time has not come. But at the beginning of chapter, uh, Luke chapter 22, we now find out there's a plot to kill Jesus. Uh, Judas, uh, the one who held the bag, the treasurer, if you will, the one who was trusted among the brother and trusted by Jesus. He had made a sidebar deal with the adversaries of Jesus to uh, 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 trade him in or to betray him for 30 pieces of silver. And and, and as the, the, the text begins to matriculate, they are all now preparing for the Passover. And now also we find in this text, Jesus introduces them to uh, the Lord's Supper. And following the Lord's Supper, uh, uh, the disciples, it's amazing our mentality and attitude sometimes. In verses 24 to about verse number 30, we find them arguing in the text over who's going to be the greatest. Jesus said, did y'all hear what I said? I'm leaving here. I'm not going to be with you all. And before he's even dead and in the crowd, they arguing about who's the most preeminent, who's the one who's going to have the authority. It does just like men, body not even cold, but yet they are being about who's going to be the greatest. But then something sobering begins to hit the group. Jesus begins to say in verse number 31, Simon, Simon, he says, Satan has desire to have you. And notice what he wants to do. He wants to sift you like wheat. He wants to shake up your life. He wants to shake you uh, to the point of dismemberment. He wants to, everything that's nailed down, he wants it to come loose. Anything that's stable in your life, he wants to shake it around. Everything was cool and calm in the house until so-and-so showed up, until this thing came into the picture, until I started that job. Or the, Look, that's what Satan is desiring to do. He said, but Simon, look, look, I just want to let you know, I prayed for you. What did you pray, Jesus? I'm so glad you had that your faith fail not. That your faith is not obliterated. That your faith will continue to exist. I prayed for you that your faith does not fail. I'm telling you, son, the enemy wants to test you. The enemy is going to test you. He's going to go for the leader first. And I stopped by to tell you, single minds out there, doesn't matter. Heads of household, he's coming for you. Because when the head falls, the rest of the family will uh, 
be in disarray. You've got to know you've got to stand strong in the Lord. Sometimes that you want to run out of your own strength. I swear God's strength will begin to kick in. And we have to rely on his spirit to lead us and continue to guide us. Listen, when we run out of our own strength. I don't know about you, but sometimes life gets heavy. Sometimes life gets uh, difficult. There was a man who was uh, traveling the mundane seas and he had a little boat and before you know it, there was a storm that came and he found himself on a deserted island and and uh, he had, you know, some of his possessions in the boat, and they were wet, and he uh, bought them to land, and he did. He was a boy scout at one time, and he learned how to put some things together, and he had a makeshift tent that he was able to uh, bring about, and, and as a result, he had some fire, and he went about uh, throughout the course of the day, and that particular day, he was trying to uh, think about what he can do. So he know that there were ships who would pass that particular region from time to time. I need to do something to get uh, their attention. And as he went about that particular day looking for food and continued to uh, uh, develop a plan to get him off this island, he goes back to his hut, and he begins to see his hut in flames. He said, Lord, have mercy. I, I'm on a deserted island. There's no cell phone reception. I, I, there's a, I can't even get in touch with anybody else. And now, the possessions that I did have, my ID and my wallet and my, my funds and, and my and baby kids, baby pictures, all, all of that that I had that was with me is now up in flames. Looked like the man had a dilemma, but before you know it, he, this man had fell asleep and it tossed him. But on the next day, he heard uh, a sound of a large boat that was actually not on that particular island. And he walked up to the captain, and the captain, he said, he said, how in the world did you know uh, uh, that I was even over here? He said, I saw the smoke signal that came up uh, uh, late last night, and we made our trip this morning. And what he thought was something that was uh, tumultuous, something that was ultimately going to lead to his end, turned out actually to be his blessing because the captain said, I heard the smoke signal. And I, I'm here to remind somebody, even on this morning, you may be going through turbulent times. If you think God doesn't understand, but tell of God to hear to cry out to him and say, Father, I'm hurting and I need you. Your prayers don't have to be, you know, all dignified. And sometimes, Lord, I need your help. And sometimes you've got to learn to send up that smoke signal to God and let him know it's too heavy for me. And I need you to put strength in my shoulder so I'm able to bear what it is that I'm going through. I'm tired of losing loved ones. I'm tired of hearing that another loved one is going to the hospital. I'm tired of this pandemic. I'm tired of the restrictions. I'm tired. Sometimes you've got to learn to throw up a smoke signal to God and he's short of able to bring you through. The trials and adversities of life are never pleasant, but it is in them that we learn the secrets of dependence or grace and hope and his presence. None of us wishes for trials of adversity, but it is through them that God refines the metal of our lives and molds us into his image. Just as metal is placed into the furnace and is heated uh, to a white hot state so that the dross can be removed, God allows us to enter the furnaces of affliction so that he might refine and purify our lives. Simon, Simon, Jesus reverted to his original surname, Satan. He's looking to claim you. This concept of claiming is to uh, obtain by asking for it. This is, is a good thing for you to know even on the day and even at the points where you become so overwhelmed that, you know, if the Lord loved me, he wouldn't allow me to go through this particular thing. God knows more about what you can handle than you even do. Amen, somebody. Let me tell you something. Satan just can't do what he wants in your life. He still has to ask for permission. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan is asking, he's requesting look to get at you, but I want to let you know I, there are some things that are in the permissive will of God. He said, if God loved me, how, why in the world would he allow Satan to attack me? Why in the world would he allow Satan to distort the good that I'm trying to do? But sometimes you got to understand God has a permissive will, and as a result of his permissive will, look, he's trying to get us to a particular growth point, so our faith, listen, can increase from one level to another level. But you can't go to the next level without 
now going through the fiery furnaces of life or through the afflictions and the trials that the enemy will bring your way. You will be stuck at the same level forever if you don't endure any hardship. You don't know if your faith is worth keeping unless it's first tested. And I'm here to remind somebody, even on today, let me tell you something, you're going to have some trials in this life. In order for your faith to grow, it's got to be tested. But see, you got to know there was some consolation. Now, it would have been scary for anybody else. If Jesus came to me. Said, oh, let me tell you something. Satan desired to have you, man. I had some running to Satan before, and he's pretty powerful. I need some help. He said, But listen, don't you be overwhelmed, child. God, don't you be overwhelmed. Simon, I just want to know. I've been praying for you that your faith does not fail. And, and this article had brought some consolation to the mind of, of, of Simon Peter because he, he remembers the times in which Jesus prayed and great things happened. He, he prayed and 5,000 men were fed. He prayed and 4,000 men and women were fed. When he prayed, uh, Tyrus' daughter got up. When he prayed, Lazarus, he said, Father, Lazarus came forth from the grave. When Jesus prayed, Good things happen. He says, Simon, I know there's an adversary. He's coming for you. He's going to test you beyond measure. I know you think you're strong enough. I know you think you can handle anything. I, I know based on your words. And, and see, Jesus was actually prophesying or forecasting something that had not happened yet. He's going to tempt you. He's going, he wants to shake you and shake you up like we. But I've been praying for you that your faith does not fail. And let me let me see this. Let me see this. Sometimes Simon is just like any of us. He said, Lord, I don't know what you're talking about, but I am going to tell you this. Lord, I'm with, I'm with it. I'm ready to go with you to prison. And to them, I'm going to ride and die, Lord. You, you, I, I, I hear you and everything. You're going to die. I'm going to die. You go to prison. I'm going to go to prison. And the Lord said, listen, I can see further down the road than you can. He said, Simon, before the clock rolls three times, you're going to deny the fact that you even know who I am. Lord, have mercy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Jesus stood up for them. Jesus stood in the gap for them. Jesus made provision for them. But sometimes, look, he said, there's going to come to a point in your life, there's going to come to a point in the faith, you will not take perish, but you will retreat. And then the Bible lays out the, the picture in the Garden of Eden, and we find from Matthew and Mark and Luke's account that we find that when they came for him, uh, you know, uh, they, Judas betrayed him with a kiss. It's one thing if, if uh, you know, one in your group betrayed you who was close to you, one who was a trusted advisor to the point where everybody trusted him with all the money, and then another person, he denied the fact that you all had either any association. I'm here to let you know I said all that to say that we have a Savior that can identify without suffering. You think you're the only one been betrayed in your life. You think you're the only one that somebody to stab you in the back in your life. You think you're the only one that you have done for them and they act like they don't even know who you are. We have a Savior that can identify with your suffering. I'm here to tell you, child of God, take heart this morning. Lift up your head. Straighten your back. The God of glory is on your side. It is important for you to know. Let me tell you, if God is for you, it doesn't matter who's against you, child of God, you are more than a conqueror to him that love us. Watch the text. When they came for Jesus, there was one disciple, and this disciple was Simon Peter. Peter still had some street in him, and he took his knife with him wherever he went. When, the, when Jesus was going through the crowd, I'm sure Peter was the bodyguard that was doing most of the pushing. Get out the way. Back up off him, if you will. But when they came for Jesus, when they laid hands on him, before Peter knew it, he took his knife out and cut the man's ear off. And Malchus was the one whose ear was cut off, and Peter uh, and Jesus went down and put his ear back on. And then uh, one of the other gospel writers said, uh, Peter, if you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. Do you not think that I can dispatch 12 legions of angels and wipe off everybody and anything that comes up against me? I have the power, but this is the thing that was prophesied. You need to allow this thing to happen in order for the world to have salvation. And that was something that Peter did not understand at the beginning of time, but God was teaching him. God was training him. He said, Peter, you would not have you even know me. But when Peter realized that he couldn't use his sword the way he wanted to use his sword, when he realized he couldn't do things the way he wanted to do it, and Jesus was calling him to submit himself, to, to be to have a submissive will to him, he retreated. And not only did Peter retreat, the rest of the disciples ran off to despise, rejected, and been left by himself. 
But then the Bible indicates that Peter followed afar off. And then we find in verse number 54 through 62, the accusations began to come about as Peter, he, they, he's trying to find out where they're taking Jesus. And he's watching from afar and at a distance. And then as he's warming his hands by the fire and taking comfort among some of the, the townspeople, they, they, they began to say, weren't you with him? He said, hmm. Peter, he wanted to go he said, no, I, you were one of them. And he said, no, I, I don't know what you're talking about. What, what, what you mean? What, huh? You know how it is when you've been caught in time, you're hung, you try, you know, hung, I fight you about 10 seconds. What, what do you mean? What do you, what do you say? He, Peter, Peter hit one of those numbers, you know, and, and, and somebody, don't play dumb. You know, you know what it is. And he said, no. He said, no, you were really with him. He said, listen, your speech even sound. He was a Galilean. You were a Galilean. Man, I don't know what you're talking about. There's another uh, gospel account. The Bible said that Peter cursed. See, that was in the emphatic because he was trying to express to him what you all are talking about is crazy. But in Luke's account, after the third denial, the Bible says that Jesus looked at Peter. Their eyes had caught one another's eyes, and he heard the rooster crow. And then he thought just about what Jesus just got finished prophesying about. He said, Peter, when the temperature gets hot, you're going to deny the fact that you even know who I am. Some of you all say, man, man, that's, that's cold. That's cold. That's cold. I will never forgive a person. I've been there for them. And I looked out for them. And I made a way for them. And I fed them. And I bought them over my house. And they were lost. And I made the way for them. I stood up for them. And then in my time of need, they denied the fact that they even know who I was. I know not the man. Lord, have mercy. And the Bible didn't look that thing. When, when, when Jesus and Peter's eyes connected, man, that grief was too much. The Bible says that, that Peter ran out and he wept bitterly because guilt weighs him. Amen, somebody. You can't be in comfort. Dinner just don't taste the same. Working the job is hard to do it with that when you're walking around with guilt. But there was a consolation. Peter had to go back to the words of Jesus. He said, listen, you're going to be tempted. You're going to be tested. The enemy is going to come at you. You're the leader of the group. I'm talking to somebody who's a leader. You might be a leader on the job, leader in your home, leader in the church, regardless of the capacity in which you serve. Listen, Satan is going to come for you. If he can't hit you with a frontal attack, he'll hit you from a side attack. He'll hit you with your parents. He'll hit you with your wife. He'll hit you with your kids. He'll hit you with some folk who are close to you. If I can't get to you directly on a frontal attack, I'll come from the side. I'll come from the back. I'll come from the top. If the Satan doesn't stop coming for you, he's not going to stop. The Bible said, resist the devil and he will flee. That's true. But I stop by tape, he'll come back again. Just one thing, uh, an attribute about Satan that, that's amazing. He's so persistent. He doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. Yeah, you defeated me yesterday. Be back tomorrow. Another form of temptation. He knows what it is in your life. He knows the things that continue to draw you in. He knows that thing that continues to excel you over and over and over again after you said, I'm not going to do it anymore, Lord. Lord, I'm sorry about it. You cried about it last time. And Lord, I promise I'm not going to do it again. And one more later, you find yourself in the frailty of your flesh. But I'm here to remind you to let you know you're not the only one in life that's failed. You're not going to be the first. You are not the first, and you're not the last. But see, this is the thing about with the blessing in this story. God already knew that his faith was going to falter at one time. But see, God loved him beyond his faith. Good God Almighty. That's a word. That's a word for somebody today. God loved him beyond his faith. He said, son, you're going to be tested in a way like you never thought you'd ever be tested. You're going to do something that you never thought you'd ever, ever be able to do. You've always been tight with hope. You never ran away from a fight. But after I told you to fight another way, you retreated from me as if you never knew who I was. And when you were put to the test of signifying your association with me, you said, I know not the man, not once, not twice, but at least three times. Sometimes in life, you'll find yourself in situations and circumstances that you will do things that you never thought you'd ever do. But I'm here to remind somebody that God's love can still reach you. You can't say too far what God's love can reach. He says, son, Satan's going to test you. There's some health tests that he'll send. 
The doctor gonna say, sit down. You're gonna be on this medication for the rest of your life. There's not gonna be any restorative function. You said that sometimes the test will come in the form of a car accident. Sometimes the test will, will come in the form of, of the passing of a loved one. Nobody saw it coming. They were too young to pass. They still had a family. They were in the prime of their life. And even when they were older, look, no health issues. Look, it took everybody by surprise. Look, the test will come. He said, he said, but notice I've been praying for. It means something when the Lord has been praying for. Lord, when the Lord has been praying for you. Brothers and sisters, Satan's job is to cause a believer to doubt God, to doubt the word of God, to doubt the people of God. His goal is to disrupt, disturb, dismantle, undermine, retard your faith. Satan is the master strategist, Brother Bradley told us on yesterday, the attacks, look, look, Satan attacks your courage, he uh, utilizes fear to discourage you in your walk, he attacks your commitment to convince you to not be dependable, he attacks your consistency, he attacks your character and influence, he attacks your conviction, uses philosophy and opinions to ultimately attack your faith, he attacks your connection to cut you off from support and faith field believers, See, when you're being tested, he wants you to be cheap from the church. He wants you to, uh, you know, uh, when somebody's calling to try to encourage you, to hit the red button. Say, I ain't, I ain't for it right now. I'm not going to respond to it right now. I don't even hear that right now. That, that's exactly where the enemy wants you. He wants you in isolation so you're only left to your own thoughts and his whispers in your ear. Lord have mercy. I ain't talking about nothing. <laughs> Somebody told me. <clears throat> I'm talking about things that I swear with every single day and I see in the life of other believers and I see even like Peter. If there's somebody, this is who was bold, it was Peter. Peter, one of my favorite Bible characters, because that's a restorative function about the nature of the story. Yes, he failed in a other way. Yes, he failed, listen, in front of a whole lot of people. Yes, his failure was actually called out Look, among others, not Peter, not the leader. And they think among themselves, if Peter going to go out like that, what in the world are we going to do? But he says, son, I have prayed for you, and when you are converted, or when you repent and turn back to me, where all of your allegiance relies in me, I got a job for you to do. And I'm here to remind you today, child of God, God has a job even for you. Don't fret over your failures. Peter's lost his courage. Jesus foretold Peter about his pending failure, and, and these things are going to come. He says that your faith does not fail, reveals the purpose of Jesus' prayer as well as his intent. Faith here does not correct, doesn't mean doctrinal uh, belief. Uh, but it does mean faithfulness. Jesus prayed that Peter and the other apostles would not lose their faithfulness, their loyalty, and their allegiance to him during this sifting period. Child of God, corona has come by your house. Child of God, unemployment has come by your house. Child of God, death has come by your house. Child of God, your problems have come by your house. Child of God, sickness of loved ones have come by your house. Child of God, family dysfunction have come by your house. Child of God, marital dysfunction has come by your house. Child of God, you're struggling personally. You're struggling financially. You're struggling with your weight. You're struggling with all different dynamics. The struggle is real, but you ain't gonna be this life without struggling. But the dynamic that still rings true, you need to hold on to your faith. He said, I'm praying for you that your allegiance to me does not fail. That's why I got in my spirit, Psalm 34, verse number one, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. In the good times, I'm going to bless him. And even in those difficult, difficult times when I don't feel like waking up in the morning, I'm still going to bless him because he's worthy to be praised. He's better to me than I've ever dared to be to myself. He loved me beyond the point that I even love myself. He's forgiven me even there's some things. I still struggle to forgive myself over the God we serve. He's a good God. And his love in a bank. He said, I pray for you. The eyes in fact, Jesus' prayer would prove greater than Satan's attempt to undo his disciples' allegiance. Did you hear that? He said, I know the enemy is going to come to you, but he uses the personal pronoun, I. I is in the emphatic text in Greek. Jesus prayed, Jesus' prayer would prove uh, greater than Satan's attempt to undo his disciples' allegiance. Jesus prayed as their advocate against the accuser. It's important for us to know. You remember Romans 8, verse number 34 shows us that Jesus. Jesus is our intercessor. He sits at the right hand of God, interceding in the affairs of the children of God. First John chapter 2, verse number 1 and 2, he says, children, I pray that you don't sin, but if any man sin, he has an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the 
righteous, who, 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 who intercedes, who is the intermediator. He you is the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the entire world, yours as well as mine. Pray that your faith not fail, that you do not stop. That perseverance is, you know, persists and believing in me fail has not been rendered in the context. Doesn't mean look, I'm praying that your faith doesn't collapse. I'm praying that your faith doesn't disappear. I'm praying that your faith is not extinguished. When you have turned back, he's saying, Listen, you've got to repent from this way. Some circumstance, you said, Lord, I let that one go. I let it, yeah, I was totally out of character with this. I didn't stand up for you when they were saying it was false, it was wrong. But see, I, you know, I didn't want to. You know, I, I, I'd rather be in favor with them, but at the same time, I didn't stand up with you. Many of us have fell down on so many different levels in so many different ways, but yet we continue to give you day after day after day. And sometimes our spirit had not been right. We've been in unforgiveness. We haven't repaired relationships that we could. We haven't given up habits that we say we try and stop, but you ain't done anything to actually try to stop. You haven't incorporated, you know, individuals in your life that's going to hold you accountable because really, we really don't want to stop. Sometimes we love the sin that we're in, even though that flies in the face of God. He says, I'm praying for you, your faith will not. But I pray for you. He said, let me tell you something. When you turn around, when you repent, God's looking for some of us to repent today. Lord, you know, I've been lackadaisical. I've been nonchalant. I've been, you know, I'm still in bed. I ain't even got to wash your clothes. I ain't even wash your face. I ain't even sitting in a posture. Right? Since we've been home, I ain't even saying it all. That's why I'm telling my camera. Lord, I know, I know I've been there. I know I ain't really been saying for you, Lord. Lord, I know I have been operating, even if we're in this place of transition, even when we're in this virtual environment. Lord, I haven't set a posture of praise. I wake up at the last minute and long in late. And I, I know I have the comforts of home, but Lord, I haven't really set my mind to worship you in the way that I should. And I really probably have to say the best time for my children because they act like they don't want to serve you anymore either. Lord, help me to arrest my mind. Help me to get myself together. Help me to repent, which means to turn and to change it. The Lord told him you're going to be tested. Failures will come in your life. But when you get your allegiance back, when you come to yourself, when you turn things around, I got a job for you, child. God, strengthen the brethren. Encourage somebody Yes, after you come through, after you go through what you're going through, God's got a purpose for you. He not just bless you to be able to make it through for no reason. You gotta help somebody. God help you pass on the blessing, encourage somebody, lift them up, send an encouraging message, leave a voice spell if you don't get up direct. Make sure you smile at somebody in this world. They need it. Smile under the mask if you will. If they can't see you smile, he's just wave your hand. That's a sign that God is still in the blessing business. So small things truly go a long way. God bless the cashier. God bless the person uh, that comes to wait on you at the uh, restaurant. Wherever you go, uh, take some blessings with you. This life is filled with challenges, and the Lord will allow us to go through faith building experiences. But through it all, we must stay focused on the mission. Fulfill the mandate to strengthen it and encourage others. After we repent and regain our footing, the Lord told Peter to strengthen his companions. But the world at large, and the world at large, we have the same mandate today. After we experience mercy and grace in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we must do our best to share it and to help build others up. We should be a church. We should be a church of builders. Man, people ought to want to be a part of our church because you're going to get built up. Look, if you, you can come in here not being a builder, but if you stay around here uh, time after time and you keep hearing this word, you're not just here to sit. God has called you to serve. He said, I came not to be served, but to serve. And the Bible said he gave his life a ransom for many. God has placed you in the body to be an advocate for him. God has placed you in the body to be an example to him. God has placed you in the body. He's called you out of darkness into the marvelous light so others can come to know more about him. We should be a church of builders. We have areas of our lives that are broken, but I declare that we are still blessed. Strengthen your brothers. In the New Testament, the word frequently describes the process of helping someone grow in their Christian faith. How Peter fulfilled this is seen in the book of Acts by his leadership, by completing a number of the disciples and the, up into 12, his preaching at Pentecost in chapter 2, uh, all the way to chapter 4, his early preaching in the city. 
cities of Jerusalem, chapter 3 and chapter 5, his role in the expansion of the church in Samaria in chapter 8 to the Gentiles. And then we find him in chapter 10 and chapter 11 and chapter 15. Brothers, therefore, refer more than just the other apostles. But the concept is you have a job to strengthen the brothers. Look, when Peter writes as an older man in 1 Peter 5 and verse number 8, this is an older man now who's got some battle scars. This is an older man now who's been through some things. When he says to you, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, he's not talking to you about theory. He's talking about what he's gone through and what God brought him through. Amen, somebody. See, Brian, 1 Peter 5, verse 1 5, 5, Peter 5, verse 8, 1 Peter 5, verse 7, that's the only one care about it, but he cares for you. Despite your struggle, God cares. God cares. There are some things that are in the permissive will of God. You're not facing what you're facing by accident. God can be using it as a faith-building opportunity to help you grow in your faith. You can never go to the next level without facing some adversity. Yeah, you might have gotten a rejection letter from the school that you thought you wanted to go to. But let me tell you something. God has better plans than you. Based on his will, that's a thing called providence. He knows where you need to be at the time you need to be in. So don't, don't cry over spill. Now, I know it made me frustrated. You said, I'm just going to learn to trust the will of God. Amen. So I thought this relationship was going to work out. God knew that person wasn't the best for you. Sometimes you got to do the left. Stop swiping right all the time. Amen, somebody. But God, God knows what's right. Check the book. Check the record. Don't know where you are today. As your faith grows, we have a mandate from God. Strengthen and encourage others. You're going to go through things we all are. But see, even as you're going through, God still got a mandate to encourage somebody. Encourage somebody as you go through your struggle. Man, this is hard, but I'm going to stay faithful to the Lord. Amen, somebody. Yeah, this cancer treatment is something else, but God's still good. Amen. I'm thankful for what he does. Yeah, I lost this, but I'm thankful for what I do there. Amen. That's everything to do about respect. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Don't know who you are today. Don't know where you are. God used a person like Peter. Man, he had a messed up beginning, but man, God still used him to preach the first gospel sermon on the day of Pentecost when 3,000 souls came to Jesus and he helped. He was a starter of the church, became an elder in the church. The Lord used him in a mighty, powerful way. Now, the lifestyle of Peter is outlined in scripture because we'd be able to see if God used a person like Peter. I know he probably can use me too. And I'm here to let you know, child of God, he can use you, he wants to use you. But see, he can't, he, he God won't force his will on you. He can't use who won't allow themselves to be used. See, Peter needed that grief stricken moment when he wept and went away bitterly. That's a sign of humility because he thought he was, he found himself doing something he thought he'd never do. If you're a member of the body, if you're not a member of the body of Jesus Christ, you need to become in contact with Jesus Christ. And there's some of us that you need to rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus, you need to start your relationship with him today because he's a loving God. He's a gracious God. He's a merciful God. Sometimes there was something that prompted you to tune into this broadcast on today. There's a trial. There's an issue. There's a referral from a friend. But this word was for you today. As you grow, strengthen and encourage others. That's a man. Are you strengthening anybody? Are you encouraging anybody? You got to get yourself to this point because you ain't going to leave this life without some struggles in some areas of your life. But it's important for you to know, even as you go through, don't, don't, don't just fret over your failures because we all have them in life. But God redeems. God loves and he cares for you. Hear the gospel. You want to come to him. Believe the same. Repent of your sins. Confess your faith in Christ. And be baptized today in water for the remission of your sin. You want to be saved today? You want to be baptized today? We want you to call 203 333 It's probably in the chat box for you to be able to see. If you have any questions regarding our services, we want you to uh, reach out to us. You need to make an appointment to be saved. We will make this thing happen. Even though the building is closed, we'll make permission uh, for baptism because God wants all the world to be saved. You're a member of the body of Jesus Christ. Rededicate yourself.
You need prayer, ask for prayer at the appointed time, at the appropriate time. Uh, may God bless you, may God keep you. This is our prayer. Every time I wake up in the morning, I fall down on my knees and pray. Well, I thank God for opening up my eyes and blessing.